So what do you call yourself? Welcome. Welcome to the Los Angeles Show. Hey. Hey, what can I do for you this fine day? This is your destiny. Hot, hot, hot. Right now. Welcome to the Los Angeles Show. Kick it. Come on in and enjoy yourself. Right now. We gon' party like no one else. Hey now, what you say now? Nah, it's your girl Latangela, and thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to hang out with me for another edition of the Latangela Show. Well, we'll chat about this and chat about that. A lot is going on in the capital city, around the surrounding areas, and of course, around the globe. COVID-19, we're still talking about it. Although, for the state of Louisiana, our governor, John Bell Edwards, he stated that we are entering phase one. It's like a slow reopening. Some things can happen, some things cannot. What should we expect? What should we not? But you know, safety is still first and foremost. So let's talk about those safety precautions and the things that we should be doing, like the social distancing, I'm still with that. Essential runs, essential runs, essential runs, I'm still with that. Washing your hands, making sure you do it often and at least for 20 seconds, I'm still with that. And I want you to join the conversation as well at cdc.gov. Now, when we're talking about reopening, what does it look like in your area? Like, really? Okay, so sitting here going through a couple of things as we plan to move over and say, let's give this a shot. Phase one, the reopening will allow certain things to open, still not at 100%, but at 25%. You'll have things like churches being able to operate, restaurants and coffee shops, um, including dining in, but only at 25% of their normal capacity. Movie theaters, you have the zoos and aquariums making that list, hair and nail salons. I know you're making those appointments gyms and fitness centers. They'll be able to reopen according to phase one as well, as well as casinos, video poker um, parlors, and different racetracks. But to my understanding with the racetracks, they won't allow spectators. I guess a lot of this is still new and they're filling it out, but some of the things that will remain closed um, so far, the massage establishments and spas, Got this little crick in my neck and it's been bothering me for a while. Now it's just that, you know, that one little spot is going to have to hold on a little longer. Tattoo parlors. So if you have the need for ink, you're going to have to wait on that. Carnival, amusement parks and water parks, trampoline parks, arcades and fairgrounds. All of that, according to phase one for the state of Louisiana, is going to remain closed for now. Now I want you to join the conversation. Hit me up. Twitter alert, Twitter alert, at Latangela Fay. Are you ready? I know you've been at home, you're going a little stir crazy, might even miss your normal routine, but are you ready? You know, thinking it's safe enough. What has changed for you from a month ago to now? I'd like to hear from you. Hit me up, Twitter alert at Latangela Fay, and of course, all of my links are posted at Latangela.com. Now, you know, I had to dig deep and get some of that random research. We have some Did You Know news briefs coming up, and I even got the chance to speak with Rotimi. Now, he's this talented artist, and he's been featured on Power. He's been featured on different networks like Stars, and then you also have him in upcoming films like Coming to America, the sequel. <laughs> yeah, I got the inside scoop coming up, and on top of that, He's also going to tell us about the $1,000 giveaway that he has for the In My Bed Challenge, promoting his new hit single, In My Bed. Now, I had to catch him so I could see what's good with this money, because the money is up for grabs and it's yours to get. But I want you to be sure to hit him up at Rotimi. We'll talk about that coming up in a second. Now, you know, when you have these great entertainers... And we'll say great entertainers because the world, they know them. They're consistent with their craft. They're getting all kind of numbers and reviews. Well, there's one that's getting all kind of reviews and nonprofits are saying we don't want to be attached to what they have going on. Have you heard? <laughs> the controversial rapper Takashi69 said, hey, look, I just got out. 
I want to help do more good than harm. I want to clean up my act and help some people out along the way. So he decides that he wants to make a contribution of $200,000 to No Kid Hungry Project. And they decided to say, thanks, but no thanks. Yeah, they told the representatives of Takashi 69 that, look, we don't need to accept your $200,000 donation. Now, a lot of people have been swirling around saying, well, that's ungrateful. You know how many people you could have fed with that $200,000? Oh, you know, he was just trying to reach out and do some good. Well, they rejected it and they did give a clear answer as of why. They said, quote, we're grateful for his generous offer. But as a child-focused campaign, it is our policy to decline funding from donors whose activities do not align with our mission and values." End quote. Now, if you haven't kept up with Takashi 69 I encourage you just to Google it. Just to Google it and to see if No Kid Hungry is getting a bad rep or if they're just sticking to the rules and principles and guidelines and their morals and their values. Now, this is Tangy thinking out loud. These are Tangy views. But um, if you really want to give that $200,000, right, and you really want to give that $200,000 to that organization because it really means that much and it's really on your heart, you can do it anonymously. They would never know that it came from somebody whose mission didn't align because somebody whose mission didn't align just really wanted to help. They would never notice the difference. It would be anonymous and you can still make it happen. Go to sleep with a clear conscience. And if they don't want it, the Tangy Needy Fund is always here for you, my brother. <laughs> but yeah, I want you to go and check that out. Vampire Magazine, they posted it and I say, boy, Takashi, you're just getting all kind of headline news swirling around you. Some for good news, some for not so good news. Just like this guy out in Central Maine. We're going to take a quick virtual field trip. Some of us are making headline news for all the wrong reasons. Mother's Day weekend just passed and this guy he gave something special to his mom called moments to memories because that's what it's all about it's not about the flashy gifts it's about the moments to memories now usually we want those to be some great moments that lead to even greater memories but this guy got a little too creative he went ahead and made it so much worse than just saying mom i forgot to make you the card but here goes nothing a 37 year old guy by the name of thomas b that's what we'll call him. He's out in Maine and he did the following things on Mother's Day, um, none of which I'm pretty sure his mom approved of. He um, decided to get high, said he wanted to try it, figured his mom would be there and she would have his back, so he did. Then he decided to strip, what they call it, bucket naked. He decided to strip, he did that. Then he decided to steal his mother's car on Mother's Day. He got into a high speed police chase that ended with him jumping out of the car on a church parking lot. <laughs> he could have pulled over anywhere else, but he said he felt comfortable jumping out at the church because, you know, he felt covered there. Yeah. Um, and then he decided to run into the church naked. And did I mention they were having Mother's Day service while he did? Yeah, see what I'm saying? L look, let's not be so creative in our approach. And you know, if you need help, now is the time for us to go ahead and just tap in. Sometimes it's making headline news and it then got too far, but if you feel yourself really drifting away, now is the perfect time to say, hey, you know what? I might need to pull back a little bit. I might need to reach out for some help. I might need to say, it's time for something different. Like, wow. Of course, he was arrested. Charges were filed, but whew, it's going to be an uphill battle trying to explain that one. One thing is certain, a lot of research has been going on about people finding ways to get that stress off the chest. Stress has been plentiful for many, many, many reasons, and we all cope differently, right? Well, I had to dig deep, and I was reading this article according to the New York Post. I like to trust the trusted sources. I think the New York Post, they give valuable information, so let's try it. Well, they conducted a new survey that said, listen, a lot of people are handling these stressful times because they decided to choose either all of these methods or just a few and implemented them in their daily routines. Now, a new survey found that three out of four people say that the pandemic has increased their stress and their anxiety. On top of that, they've been staying home and couldn't get to their meds the way that they wanted to. And then, even if they got out to socialize with family and friends to talk about it on a regular basis, 
that's gone away. So it's just been up and up and up and there is no happy medium. So they found 10 ways to reduce that stress. Of course, a lot of people had a lot of different reviews on this, but coming in on the top 10, using CBD, that made the top 10 list. Um, prescription meds, saying staying on top of their medication, whereas one day they choose to skip it, but they did have to consult with their physicians. I strongly encourage that. Calling or texting or even Zooming your friends because you still need to talk it out, even if it's a simple hi. It's two words, but it could be a break from reality and taking you somewhere else mentally can really pull us through. Now, some say drinking more alcohol worked like a charm. Now that can lead to other stressful situations. So I'm just gonna say it shouldn't have been so high on the top list, but it was a little higher than I would have liked. Um, meditating also made the top five. Sleeping. Now, sometimes when you're getting stressed out, you lose sleep, but they said, look, I tried it. And this meditation, this sleeping, and even some yoga got the majority of them right, according to the New York Post, as well as watching more TV. Now, I've been watching some of these shows, like some of these reality shows, <laughs> and I'm like, trash TV is completely different than it used to be. Like, <laughs> about 10 years ago, what was trash TV like? Trash TV was more of the Jerry Springer. It was more of the Maury. Now, it's the reality shows of Real Housewives of this, and then you watch me like, Real Housewives, I, all of them are the jump balls, ain't nothing up there. You know, so... It, it kind of brings you back that maybe your reality isn't so bad. <laughs> it isn't so bad because surely this has got to be made up. Yeah, maybe. But exercising made number one on that list when they said the top ways to reduce your stress. Now, I would have liked to have seen journaling make that list. I like to journal. I love to write. And um, coloring books, even adult coloring books, really take you somewhere differently, just allows you to zone out for a while, get you some arts, some crafts, crocheting. I still remember a couple of the simple stitches that my grandmother taught me. My mom, she knows how to crochet. Um, you don't even see people really doing patchwork anymore. You remember that? Those little patch quilts? It, it's been forever, so even if it's going to be something like that, I would totally encourage it. <laughs> now Mashable is all in my business. They did not survey me on this, so I'm just going to add that extra percent and said, it's me. It's me. Now I can identify with a lot of these different surveys, some of the questions that need answers. I like to chime in, but see this right here? This is all me. <laughs> 80% is what they said. Let's say 81% <laughs> of single people are ready to start dating and most want to lock someone down before the next wave of quarantines. Wait a minute, hold on. <laughs> now the readiness to start dating, I'm all here for that. That part I'm here for. But the fact they said to lock someone down before the next wave of quarantine? Okay, Mashable. Well, they were talking about it because tons of single people are thinking if this was the year that we were planning to find love, surely you can't even go to the clubs now to find it. You got to have a mask on and you can't talk to some random stranger on aisle three while you're on the middle of an essential run. So <laughs> dating sites are just, they're raising the price tag on them now because they know they got us where they want us. It's tough. It's, it's just tough. <laughs> so now where? And if you were going to meet him at church, now if you're not the first 25%, <laughs> you can't get in. You see what I'm saying? So, Mashable, I feel you on that. I do. But 44% said that they're not sure if that's something that they're into right now. Maybe the quarantine and no chill has been exactly what they needed to find themselves, to see what the things they like, the things they don't like. Because, you know, we've been spending quite some time with ourselves now. You know, do you like putting up with you? <laughs> How would you come across with somebody else trying to put up with you? Did it give you time to work on yourself just a little bit? Just, 
a little bit okay well that's neither here nor there you know may may is a wonderful month it's something that we have the opportunity to get rid of the stigma the stigma on mental health it's okay to check in it's okay to tap out it's okay to say listen let's talk i need to sort through my emotions and i want you to check it out i have this in-depth conversation going with my main man greg d he is the founder of Smile Style Entertainment, but he also does a lot of community outreach, um, the My Life Youth Fest, and talking about these issues and removing the stigmas and working through it, helping us get a game plan in place to identify that something within is going on and we need to ask questions, get the answers, trust the trusted sources. You know, and this month, for the entire month of May, I just want you to check in. Check in on your neighbors, check in on your loved ones, and let others check in on you as well. It's okay to not be okay. It's okay. Um, if you need to talk, it's not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of strength to talk it through. We're all going through a lot of uncertainties. We all have a lot of doubt from time to time. But you'll understand that we're not going through this alone. Um, the more you talk about it, the more receptive you are to being heard and to listen to others. I think we're inching our way closer to healthier days. Let's talk it out. Open a line of communication all month of May. Let's really ring, ring, ring in the awareness on Mental Health Awareness Month. So go ahead, if you haven't already, subscribe to the Latangela Show podcast. I'd hate for you to miss out on that interview. And I also want you to join in on the conversation. Hit me up with a Twitter alert at Latangela Faye. And you know, you can always find me posted at Latangela.com. Keep the fun going. You know, I like to find these different news stories just to kind of take a little escape from here and there and the reality of all of this other devastating news that we get so frequently, right? So maybe you're making plans to travel now that a lot of these bans are being lifted. Maybe not. But if you are, a lot of airlines are saying, hey, we're going to help ease your mind. We're going to help you do your best at social distancing while traveling. Okay, we're going to keep the middle aisle closed. We're going to keep that middle seat closed. Well, a lot of people are saying that, but over at Frontier Airlines, <laughs> they're saying something different according to headline reports. They're blocking all middle seats right now, and they're doing it for an upcharge of $39. So if you're planning on flying and you want to keep that center seat empty, if it's on Frontier, you're going to have to pay an extra $39 for that. Oh, they're all about the social distancing but you're gonna have to pay for that <laughs> i'm like what <laughs> I, i'm just telling you what i read over at six flags because you know now is the time you want to get out maybe it's the time of your vacation you've been planning on it well six flags they're going to require all visitors to make advanced reservations so hold on with that pull up because you know with phase one in many places it's allowing them to open you can reopen just not at a hundred percent capacity so if it's 25 percent i need you to rsvp when you get over here to six flags so we can know how many people can come in if you're the one that's not going to ride the roller coaster but you're the designated bag holder then we need to know that because somebody ain't gonna make it up in here somebody <laughs> somebody have to be on a rotator and come in a little later so <laughs> that's just something to get you going and taking a quick field trip out to utah when they say no good deed goes unpunished i automatically go to this guy <laughs> he's in utah and he has up all blue christmas lights on his house right now yeah i know i know it's may okay what about it it's his house and he said that he has up the all blue christmas lights in honor of all of the frontline workers, all of the medical workers, as a thank you. Now that's that's nice. I like it. As a matter of fact, I think the neighborhoods should just join in with this guy. Well, I'm the only one that feel that way because his neighborhood says, uh-uh, that's in violation on page three, section 201, you'll find, yeah, that's a violation of our Christmas lights after March 1st rule. I kid you not. <laughs> and if you don't take down these blue lights, we're going to charge them $50 per month. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> he's a little upset, so he's not taking them down and he's not paying the fine. I'm with 
that guy. <laughs> my house, my lights, and they stay, well, what? $50, $50 a month. Okay, well, let's talk about putting up one of those GoFundMe pages so we can help him in his cause. The man was doing it for a nice reason. Y'all let him be great, please. Just let him be great. <laughs> Another artist that I see you just refuse to let be great, the baby. Hey, Suge, Paul the baby, he's at the height of his career, and you got people out here dragging him, just skull dragging him all on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, even saw it on the MySpace. Now, this guy is stated to have whipped up on one of his drivers. According to the reports, the baby is being accused of punching and threatening a driver in Las Vegas because he wouldn't let him smoke a joint in the car. Allegedly. Alle allegedly. Now this supposedly happened in November. It's making headlines now because he's still not stroking over a check. He said, I don't know what he's talking about. The baby should present it these hands. Allegedly. <laughs> to his driver in Vegas because he wouldn't let him light it up in the back of the ride. All does he say, she say. Now, you know, if it was in November, all of the details are a little cloudy right now. That's what the baby is saying. Now, is he going to have all of these charges pressed against him? I'm not sure, but it's going to be a lot harder for him to find a designated driver from here on out. I can't tell you that. <laughs> Got to be more careful. You know, it's been a while since we've conducted our own random research. So I want to compare our notes to the Suns. Our notes to the Suns. They ask a simple question and we need simple answers. Parents, I need to talk to you, but I'm talking to you on behalf of these babies. The babies, the kids, they're maturing. They're ready for more responsibility. However, we need to know <laughs> what's the right age for kids to get their first allowance, phone, and job. Hello? Hello? I'm representing all the kids right now. Parents, these are questions that need answers, and we're conducting our own random research so we can compare our notes to the notes conducted by the son. What's the right age for kids to get their first allowance, their first phone, and their first job. Now you can weigh in by Twitter alert, Twitter alert at Latangela Faye. And of course you can always find me posted up at Latangela.com. A recent survey asked 2000 parents and they found that 10 years old is when the kids play outside without an adult around. Okay, here's how old they say the kids should be before the other things happen. First allowance, according to the son, say nine years old. First phone, at 11. Walking home from school alone, also at 11 years old. And you know, that one really depends on how far the school is and who all is on the walking route with the kids. I get it. First sleepover at a friend's house. They said 12 years old. First job. Average the age of 13, like babysitting or having a paper route. Well, we're going to have to find something to replace the paper route because now everything is so digital. Maybe like digital e-blast or something. Who knows? Staying home alone, they said 13 years old. But some states have different laws that would disagree with that. Um, <laughs> so check that first. But I want to hear from you. What's the right age for kids to get their first allowance, their first phone, and their first job. Twitter alert at Latangela Faye. And of course, I want you to check me out at Latangela.com. And you know, while you're there and you're checking it out, I also want you to check out boo, my new book. Boo, it's the fourth one. It is finally done. It is here and it is ready for your bookshelf. It's entitled Poof. Power over obstacles forever. Understanding that no matter who we are, or what phase in life we're in, we're all going to come across some challenges. But we have the power over those obstacles forever. All we have to do is unplug, plug into the source, dig deep, and go a little harder. I want you to check it out. Poof! Power over obstacles forever. It's available on Amazon or directly from my site at latangela.com. Be sure to check that out. And you know I got some interviews on the way for you. You walk past the glass. Hey, Lachelle Arez. <laughs> Good day.
What's poppin'? Real Timmy! Ah! Okay, wait a second. I had to get that fangirl moment out. Real Timmy has entered the building. Wait a second. Wait. <laughs> wait a minute. Now the party can start. What's up, y'all? How you doing, my love? Bam. Let's see how that works. Did I get this right? Ah, Yo. Right. <laughs> What's up? Hey, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm great. Um, here it is, another edition of the Quarantine and Chat. And thank you for taking time out of your schedule to be with us today. How oh, are you holding you. up with all of this isolation? Uh, you know, trying to make the best out of it. You know, just stay positive, stay, stay busy, keep your mind active. So everything's good. Right. Well, I didn't want to just start all swinging and putting you in um, harm's way, but we might as well talk about it. You're saying yeah. busy because you're getting a little too creative. You have this hashtag in my bed challenge. The yeah, world is yeah. going crazy right now. You're giving away a thousand dollars for doing this. And yeah. I kind of want to talk about um, the level of creativity that you're looking for with this contest. Uh, everything. You know, there's no limit. <laughs> you know what I mean? If you if you if you're smart, you'd use a bed, you know. Okay, and, uh, bed helps. Bed. Yeah, do what you do what you need to do in, in in that bed. If you keep it PG, if you decide not to, what's up? You know what I mean. So, <laughs> um, nah. So I partnered with Triller uh, to do something for people. You know, also as a time of um, of people needing 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 funds. You know, so I thought it would make sense for me to do something that help promote the record, but also just. See how creative people are. And yes, I'm giving a thousand dollars away to the winner. So whoever wants to be a part of the In My Bed challenge, a 15 to uh, 60 second video on Triller, uh, uh -huh. the, link, the link is in my bio on my page. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to get a thousand dollars real quick, man. You know, just make a video in my bed and share it. Listen, yeah. just here to help the people. That's all. I'm just here to help That's the people. All. <laughs> That's all I'm doing my part. You know what I'm saying? Just do what I got to do. Yeah, I mean, as soon as the floodgates open, you know, we expect to see you here in Baton Rouge. I don't know who uh, we got to talk to to make it happen, but we are definitely top 10 at getting you on a field trip. Hey, I'm, I'm down <laughs> with it. I'm with it. I'm with it. We got to make that happen. And for some of these upcoming projects, um, yeah. the sequel, here it is, Coming to America. I mean, that yeah. is legendary. Like, yes. what yeah. was the biggest thrill for you? I mean, it's kind of hard to just pick a moment, but it's just like, man. Yeah. Uh, working with Eddie Murphy, uh, working with Arsenio Hall, two amazing people, working with Wesley Snipes, knowing that I'm about to be a part of history for the rest of my life, like they gonna play that yeah. back forever. You know, and then again, like being a part of a legendary drama like Power and going straight into a legendary comedy like Coming to America, you know, it's like you can't really ask for anything more than that, you know, and so we just keep building portfolio, making people understand that, you know, we, we here to stay. The yeah. artist, how do you keep all of that separated? Uh, you make good music. You know, you make good music. You know, the the way that people's hearts is something that they can feel. So if you're part of, if you're part of acting that's legendary, that make people feel something, and you're part of a comedy that makes people laugh, and then you're part of music that when they hear "baby, baby, yeah," they know what time <laughs> it is. Wait, 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 what you say? <laughs> baby, baby, yeah. You know what I'm saying? They know what time it is. So there it is. And thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule today. We love you. We appreciate you. And we look forward to seeing you in the capital city as soon as this madness is over. I would love that. I can't I can't wait to be over there. Absolutely. And you stay safe, all right? All right, thank you. All right. Love you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Be barriers. I'm freaking barriers. I'm singing, rhyming, and rapping, and humming like they never seen it coming. Skip it to the beat of my own drumming, yo. They can't tell me.